Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's episode, what I would like to do is give you guys a more thorough you know, insight as to how I installed the Chinese diesel heater in the back of my 2019 Chevy Silverado. Now, in my last video that you can, um, you can find down below, uh, I did a, a quick camping trip with it after I got it installed. Uh, basically, that was a trial run to see if everything was going to work. Uh, to see if uh, I need to kind of change anything up before I actually took it camping somewhere. And uh, what that did is it got a lot of questions asked, you know, on my social media and on my YouTube, uh, basically about how I actually installed it. Um, so I'd like to walk you through that a little bit today. And uh, I would have rather uh, actually documented the actual install um, with the camera as I was actually doing it. However, when I decided to do it, it was late at night and dark and everything else. So it was just... It would have been very difficult to actually do with the camera so the best I could do is uh, show you exactly how I have it installed where I have everything uh, routed at where I have it installed and, and kind of how it works um, you see a lot of videos out there of these diesel heaters installed in people's vans and campers and things like that you don't see a lot of them in an actual pickup truck and uh, I like to camp in my truck because you know I go hunting and fishing a lot I'm towing the boat uh, I like camping the truck simply because it's easier than setting a tent up or getting a hotel room or whatever that might be So I wanted to utilize that Chinese diesel heater in the back of my truck. I really like that concept behind it uh, And so I wanted to try one out. It's the first one I've ever bought So to start out the brand that I bought is a Viver and I bought mine on eBay. It's a two kilowatt model they make them from basically two kilowatts up to eight ten kilowatts from what I saw on there and uh, from the reviews I read you know the the bigger ones the the five and the eight kilowatt models which are probably the most popular ones out there uh, would probably be overkill for the back of this truck it's a very small you got a six and a half foot box you know and a, and a cap on there's not very much square footage there to require heat and so I went with the two kilowatt model. I'm really glad I did. Uh, it's not too much. It's about perfect for, for that size space. So uh, Viver brand, and I, like I said, I got it on eBay. I'll put a link to the description below so you'll be able to, to check that out as well. Um, and basically, the kit was pretty self-explanatory when it showed up. I will say this, the instructions are terrible. Uh, they're kind of converted from Chinese to English, very vaguely, if you will. So there's a little bit left to interpretation. Uh, the good news is there's a lot of information online and uh, there's a, even a giant Facebook group devoted to troubleshooting either installs or the operation of a Chinese diesel heater. So there are a lot of resources at your disposal if you choose to pursue installing this in whatever vehicle you have. Um, but let's get started on this truck. So the kit actually came with this giant fuel tank. I don't remember the size of it, but it's massive. Uh, for my purpose, this was useless. I have no place to cleanly mount this in the back of this truck. So uh, the first step was to source a new fuel tank. Uh, so basically I went on Amazon, eBay, and searched and searched until I found something a little bit better. So I found a smaller little, basically a one and a half gallon, more rectangular shaped one, not this giant piece here. So. Uh, this might work for you, but it did not work for me, so basically throw that thing out. It also came with this mounting plate here. It's a flat little mounting plate for the intake and exhaust, everything else. Uh, you bolt that down flat with the unit, and uh, this would work in a lot of applications. Uh, and it would have worked in mine, except for, you know, in my research, I stumbled across people that make these, they call a turret plate. And so basically, it's this plate with a flange that mounts through uh, the surface that you're mounting this to. So instead of drilling two or three or five little holes with this guy, you take like a four inch hole saw and you can drill one giant hole that flange fits through there and all of your mounting locations, uh, hookup locations for your fuel line, your intake pipe and your exhaust pipe are all easy to get to underneath that turret plate. I like that as well because you can seal all the way around with basically that red uh, high temperature RTV silicone and by doing that basically you seal up any chance of you know exhaust 
uh, fumes or anything like that getting up into the to the area that I'm sleeping. So uh, it seemed like the safer option and it also seemed like the easiest option. And I'll show you guys that here in a minute. So I have everything mounted in my sleeping platform in the back of this truck. So this is what I built for my storage and where I sleep. Everything is in here. It's kind of a self-enclosed um, storage box, if you will, that I'm able to sleep on top of. I keep all my cooking stuff. I keep uh, everything under here. Anything that I'm bringing camping, it's organized, it's out of the way. So what that means, I have a 12 volt battery set up in the back of here with a fuse panel and a master switch so I can kill the power to everything when I don't want any you know, power draw or whatever off of my battery in times when I'm not using it. So I'm not always having to charge the battery. And that 12 volt battery is what powers the diesel heater. Uh, it comes with a wire harness, it comes with a thermostat, it comes with everything you need to, basically it's plug and play. If you understand uh, by looking at it, you know, where your power leads go and then where you're gonna mount your, your thermostat device, it's really not a difficult thing to do. Anyone can do it. Uh, just have patience and uh, it's a super easy install and, and I'm telling you, it is a game changer. If you're like me and you like camping, in your vehicle, you know, in your camper, wherever you camp in the wintertime and it's cold, man, for a hundred bucks, how can you go wrong? That thing is awesome. Uh, I've used it a couple times now and uh, had no failures with it so far. Uh, it's super efficient. It uses very little diesel uh, when you're not running it on high. I, in the back of this truck, I'm typically running it, uh, you know, medium low at the most. So uh, it's really easy on the diesel fuel and uh, the heat that it produces is a really nice dry heat. Uh, you don't have any um, residual moisture that a non-vented uh, heater like a like a buddy heater or whatever would give off so when you wake up your windows aren't as uh, wet with the condensation your sleeping bag all your stuff isn't as damp it's nice and dry and warm so it was kind of a game changer for me uh, being able to use this instead of the buddy heater that I used for years so uh, most people when you are camping and myself included in the before the diesel heater we had two options you had a propane heat source like a buddy heater or a sunflower heater, which I don't recommend in a small space because they are they get very hot and uh, they tip over easy and uh, bad things could happen. So what I've carried along in the past is a Mr. Buddy heater such as this. Now this thing heats the truck cap very well, uh, almost too well. Uh, it gets really hot. You have two settings on there. You got a low and a high. And even on low, uh, you could cook yourself right out of there in just minutes. Uh, produces good heat. Uh, but it is a moist heat because this the combustion process is not vented out of the truck cap. So uh, inherently the propane burning uh, moisture is a byproduct of that and you end up with a lot of it inside the truck. So I still will carry this guy as a backup in case for some reason that diesel heater decides not to work. But uh, this is probably what most people use and this is a great option for heating the back of your truck. It's just not as good as the diesel heater that I recently installed. So I have this guy and then the other option is an electric space heater such as this. Uh, this was one I purchased from Walmart several years back. Uh, this has a thermostat. You can set the temperature and uh, it turns on and off as needed for that temperature. Uh, it's an excellent heat source. It's dry. Uh, it's really everything the diesel heater is but easier. The issue with this is you can't run it off a battery. It would drain the battery you know, way too fast and uh, you have to camp in a spot then with power or carry a generator with you to power it. So um, if I'm in a campground with electricity, I have no issue using this, but I'm not gonna run a generator all night just to use this to keep warm. So it's a great way to heat your truck cap. Uh, I just, it doesn't really fit my purpose for 90% of my trips. Uh, there are a couple campgrounds I do stay in that have power when I'm fishing out the river or whatever, um, and they were great when I have access to uh, uh, shore power. Um, but this is one I'll have with me on those instances. And the buddy heater's always with me just in case the uh, diesel heater were to have issues or whatever. I'm not familiar enough with them to maybe troubleshoot on the run. So uh, if something were to happen, I dig that buddy heater out and I'll be able to um, you know, stay warm in the back of my truck like I always have. I've had no issues with the diesel heater yet after several trips, so knock on wood. Uh, it continues to be that way and I can get several good years of use out of it. You know if that diesel heater takes a crap after a couple years, you know, I'll probably just spend another $107 and buy a new one and, and unbolt this one and bolt a new one in there. So um, the one question that I have on the Chinese diesel heater is longevity. 
I honestly don't know what kind of longevity to expect out of it. A lot of people are buying these, a lot of people are using them, but there's not a lot of people reporting back after three, four, five years on it. So time will tell, you know, how, how durable and, and how robust they are and reliable. But uh, in the short time that I've had it, every time I go to start it up, it fires right up, runs all night with no issues, and uh, it's been excellent, honestly. So I'm pretty excited about trying it out more this winter. I've got some fishing trips planned and uh, some other camping trips planned that uh, I'll have to utilize that thing because, you know, it's still really cold outside. Uh, today I'm in a hooded sweatshirt, but it's not nice out. It's probably 25, maybe 30 degrees. Uh, no wind though, so it's not terrible. Um, so let's get started on the diesel heater. We'll get up in the back of the truck here and I'll kind of show you exactly where everything is mounted. And then I'll take you underneath the truck and show you how I have everything mounted under there. And then we'll give it a little test run. Then you can get an idea of how it actually works. So let's get started on that. So this is my sleeping platform, looking at it from the inside. So as you can see, I mounted the actual diesel heater unit underneath there uh, in an area where I could easily mount the hot air duct, if you will, out through to the actual area where we need to heat. So it took a little bit of time to figure that out because underneath the truck you have limited options on where you can actually drill the hole to have everything fit because you have other things like the fuel tank of the truck uh, spare tires all that stuff that you really have to be mindful of where you're going to mount so it took a little bit of measuring and thinking kind of brainstorming where i actually want to drill that hole because if you don't plan it through well enough once you drill that hole you know you're stuck with it so i didn't like the idea of drilling a hole anyway so i wanted to make sure that when i did everything was exactly where i wanted it so from there sorry if this is shaky so from there the wire harness goes up and over and i try to do as good of a job as i could to tidy that up with some loom tubing and things like that it goes over to this fuse panel here where I actually have the unit fuse with a 20 amp fuse as per the instructions. Um, and then that's my master switch for the power. This is a Group 27 deep cycle marine, basically a trolling motor battery for a boat. It's sealed, uh, AGM is sealed versus a, you know, traditional wet cell battery. So uh, it's not as, I guess, on my research as dangerous to have, you know, in your sleeping space as a regular battery. They cost a little bit more though. I've also, you know, never run that thing out. It does very well at powering basically all of my electronics on uh, camping trips. Okay, so it also needs fuel. So in this battery box here, I kind of manipulated it to house the fuel tank. And I'll show you that in a second. But basically it encapsulates the fuel tank. So if there's ever a spill or a fuel line within there, decides to leak, it leaks into a plastic housing that I can easily clean out versus leaking all over the, you know, the floor of my trucks. All right, so we'll look at the actual fuel tank itself. Now remember, this is an aftermarket tank that I bought off eBay or Amazon. So in there is the tank itself. As you can see, it's a lot more conducive to being in a small space. Uh, it's not nearly as big. It only holds a gallon and a half, which is perfect. I'm not camping for, you know, three weeks at a time. So I get two, three, four days, you know, out of that tank, I'm good. So basically it's pretty empty right now. They do have a little hole that's like a vent hole. And I noticed when you do travel, uh, it does leak out of there a little bit. So when I'm traveling, I put a little piece of duct tape over that hole to basically stop it from leaking. All right, so you can see in here, I mounted some little brackets in there to uh, hold the fuel tank in place on traveling. It's not bouncing around. And then the fuel line goes into that fuel filter. And then I'll show you where that goes to the fuel pump next. So this is the box where I mounted the fuel pump. As you can see, the fuel line goes in there on the side. Uh, the point of putting this in here was to quiet down the fuel pump. Uh, the fuel pumps for a diesel heater are very loud. Uh, if you've ever watched videos on them, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's kind of a dull thud, 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 kind of a repetitive clicking, like a deep resonating clicking sound. 
and I wanted to try to drown that out a little bit. So basically I put it inside this camera box and it works fantastic. I can still hear it, but not to the point that it's gonna affect me from sleeping or anything like that. It's a very quiet, um, you know, if you're listening for it, you'll hear it, but if you didn't know it was there, you would probably wouldn't, wouldn't really hear it. So um, I'll show you how I have that mounted in there. All right, so within there is this foam. Take that down. Okay, and you can see where I have the fuel line routed to the actual fuel pump. These camera boxes have these little foam knockouts that you can kind of pull out there to fit whatever camera or whatever you're trying to get in there. And uh, it just so happened I could perfectly pull out the shape of the fuel pump and it all that foam in there when you have it shut really does a good job of deadening that sound so it's not as not as loud as what uh, a lot of installs have so um, if you guys have a noisy fuel pump that you're trying to figure out how to quiet down this box i think was 10 bucks it's very small it's probably eight inches by seven inches maybe and about four inches deep so it really isn't very big and uh man it really does a really really good job so I'll put that back in there, shut that thing up, and that's that. So the fuel line that goes to the actual diesel heater now comes out of the side of the box with a hole that I drilled and I wrapped the fuel line to protect it in some electrical loom, like split loom tubing. And uh, that was pretty easy to do. Uh, basically, the fuel line that comes with these things is trash. I know I'm going to have to replace that sometime. I just don't want to do it this winter when it's cold out. So I put some loom tubing on it. Hopefully that does a good enough job of protecting it to get me through this winter when I can work with some little bit um, higher quality fuel line uh, for next winter. But basically, without drilling any holes in the box of the truck, I was able to flip that fuel line up and over uh, kind of the inside divider of the box and get it down below the truck. I can't really show it to you because there's too much stuff in the way, but imagine up under the bed side or the bed rail, uh, there's a spot, there's a hole there that you could feed that fuel line up and over. And uh, so next I will take you underneath the truck and show you how I have everything uh, mounted underneath there. All right guys, this is that turret plate that I was talking about. And that's the round thing that comes through the actual truck bed. And so that thing basically makes everything a lot easier to install. You drill that one hole, you bolt the unit itself to that plate, send it on through that hole, and then that red stuff is the high temp silicone. And basically when you do that, you ensure that no exhaust gases can really get up into the truck where you're sleeping. And so this here is the exhaust. I don't have a lot of room down here to try to film, so. And then that, that black, that bigger black pipe there, that's the, cool, the fresh air intake for the unit, and that's the filter for it there. And that just keeps crud from ending up in the unit itself. And then you can see where the, that little black uh, loom tubing with the fuel line goes up into the unit itself there. So pretty self-explanatory here and uh, you know pretty easy. So next I'll kind of show you where I have the exhaust run through. Okay, so that's where the exhaust pipe exits, the back of the truck. And my plan is to clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna try to get some real stainless steel exhaust, not this Amazon stainless steel exhaust, and actually end the exhaust up under the truck so it's not visible. And what I'd like to do is make kind of a slip-on exhaust piece that when I'm actually stopped and parked to camp that I could slip on it, that would actually help the exhaust exit out of the back of the truck. So basically you wouldn't know it's there. As you can see right now, I mean, it's visible at all times so I'd like to make it a little cleaner get that tucked up underneath there and then be able to put a piece that would go out from under the truck when I'm actually using it all right so this is the control unit to the diesel heater now when you look at diesel heaters online there are a ton of different control units that come with the different units so yours might not look like this one it might look like three or four different styles that I've seen. So each one operates a little bit differently. Uh, 
you know, there's a, like I said earlier, there's a lot of resources online to help you figure these things out because it's not as cut and dry as one would like it to be, but with a little diligence, usually you can figure it out pretty, pretty quickly. So to turn it on, pretty simple. Make sure you got power on, which we do. And then what we wanna do is just hold this middle button down here until it says on, like that. Now, there's a bit of a process here. I don't know if you can hear, but the unit itself turned on, started to blow air at a low rate. And uh, what'll happen here is once it gets up and going, then the fuel pump will kick in. And once you hear that, the unit itself will fire. So, all right, that little tiny thumping, clicking sound you hear, that's the fuel pump pumping fuel to the unit from the fuel tank. And you'll hear the unit fire. I can hear that right now. So this whole cycle is probably about a minute from the time you push the power button on to when the unit actually fires on my unit specifically. Now this might, this fuel pump noise probably sounds louder via the microphone on the camera. It's pretty sensitive than what it actually sounds like in person. It's really not loud at all. All right, starting to pick up its pace a little bit. All right, and the unit itself now is running. So basically what it's doing is pulling, this is kind of where it pulls in just, you know, ambient air. It runs across a bunch of heat exchanging fingers on that diesel heater. And when it comes out this other side, is when it blows through there, it, it blows hot air. So none of the air that it blows is air that was part of the combustion process. It's basically ambient air that was around the unit itself. So I've got it turned up pretty high right now, so you can hear it's cooking along pretty good here. But keep in mind, it really is not this loud. This microphone amplifies everything. So now the unit is up and running. Get an idea of what it sounds like here. All right, so now that I showed you guys that, we'll let it run here for a little bit and I'll let you see what it sounds like from the outside of the truck. All right, so this is what the diesel heater sounds like from outside the truck. Uh, there again, I'm not sure how much the microphone is gonna muffle the sound of it, but basically, that it's a it's kind of a dull roar uh quiet of course um and honestly it's quiet enough to where you know if someone was 10 15 feet away i doubt they would hear this thing running um you know if you take a step back here you know i'm about eight feet from the truck now and i'm not sure what you can hear what you can't hear but uh it's really really quiet it's really, you can't hear it from inside the truck for sure, and from outside, from just a few paces away, you wouldn't know that thing is running, so. Um, no smoke, uh, maybe on startup for the first minute or two, a little smoke, but after it's warmed up, there's zero smoke. Just that, that little bit of noise that comes out of it, and that's about it, so. Um, really, for stealth camping applications, you could still get away with running it, not a problem at all. All right, so this is the thermostat controller, if you will, that came with the Chinese diesel heater. And so on this P2.0 is the frequency of the pump. So the higher that is, the more heat, you know, the more fan speed, the more fuel it's putting to the actual heater. Basically the hotter it is, the higher setting. So you can turn this thing all the way up with these little dials here, these little buttons, all the way up to 3.2 on this specific unit. Now that's maxed out. Now that's when you're getting your most, your most hot air, the most fan speed, the most fuel being delivered to the pump. And uh, that's the setting that I like to start on when I first fire it up. Basically get it up to temperature to where I'm comfortable and then I dial it back down again just so it runs at a nice quiet maintaining speed. So you can knock it back down to, you know, what I, what I found when I've camped with it is, you know, 1.5 for the night is pretty comfortable. It'll keep it, you know, close to 70 in there at night. And as you can hear, it the, the noise really quiets down. At 1.5, you know, I think my last video was roughly 20-ish degrees outside, you know, and it kept it somewhere around, you know, upper 60s anyway overnight. So perfect, comfortable sleeping temperature there. So it also has, I'm not sure how well it works, but it has like an elevation setting where it 
supposedly adjust the air fuel mixture to compensate for being at higher altitudes. Not sure I trust that based on what I've read, but I'd like to try it out up in the mountains one of these days. And I think there's a setting down here for that, right there. You see that little mountain there that showed up right, right about there. I know it's kind of blurry, but that's the elevation setting. And supposedly that helps with uh, running it at, you know, higher, higher elevation. So we'll get to try that out as well. But basically simple, real simple, uh, not a lot to it there. And uh, it's easy enough to operate to where, you know, pretty much anyone could figure it out with a little bit of, you know, due diligence, I guess. Uh, not as simple as your normal, you know, Fahrenheit degrees type thermostat, but it gets the job done. It's not terrible. So um, what I'm going to do is let this thing run. What I have is my little temperature sensor there for indoors and outdoors. I put that right near the heat duct there and we can see how much heat this thing cranks out here. So I'm gonna give it about five minutes uh, running on there. And then what I'll do is uh, we'll check it out and see what the temperature is. All right, so I've had my little temperature sensor about eight to 10 inches away from the actual heat duct for about three to four, maybe five minutes now. And uh, I'm not sure we can see that here. There we go. So basically this inside unit, uh, just kind of sitting on the bed here with the back of the truck open says 34 degrees. And the air coming out of the actual duct is 117 degrees. So that shows you right there that it makes some really nice hot air. And uh, dialing it back or, or ramping it up to your exact needs is the nice function of this. You don't just have high and low. You have, you know, 30 different settings in between. So basically, you know, you can dial it into your exact comfort level, whatever that might be. So um, yeah, really nice dry, hot air this thing produces. All right, so lastly, I'll kind of show you how to turn this thing off. So basically what I think you should do is probably turn it all the way up to high for a few minutes before you shut it down, kind of burn all the, the crud out of there from what I've read online. But in our instance today, we'll turn it up there quick, but then we'll turn it off. So basically all you do is the center button, the same one we turned it on with, you just hold it until it says off, like so. And uh, you can hear it kind of spooling back down there. And uh, it has a cool down cycle where it, uh, the temperature of it will start to cool down as it's there's the fan continues to run and so you'll see this cool down cycle will start to slowly knock that number down a little bit and once it's at a safe temperature to actually shut down the unit itself will shut off so usually that seems to be around 70 degrees celsius so that's about it it'll shut down here in a second once it gets a little bit uh, cooler in temperature and uh, that's the extent of using the, the Chinese diesel heater. Uh, pretty simple, pretty simple installation. And uh, you guys that do camp in your truck in the winter are absolutely gonna love it. The last thing that I forgot to mention is that it comes with a keychain style remote for it. I haven't really had a chance to play with it yet, but basically that's the remote there. So as you can see, it has an on and an off and an up and a down so uh, I haven't had a chance to really I think there's a way to link it to it I haven't played with that yet I really don't see the purpose of this for my specific needs because I have this mounted back here already that's just as easy to adjust the temperature but some of you might have a larger RV or a you know a a, a larger van or something where it might not be as convenient just to go to the thermostat itself to shut it down or, or adjust the temperature or turn it on so maybe this would work really well for some of you in my space it's kind of just kind of gimmicky i guess but it does come with it and uh it does serve a purpose to those of you that that might need. all right guys it got kind of dark out and uh so i'm gonna wrap this video up i don't have a lot of good light to shoot with but uh hopefully you found this information useful if you're looking at installing a diesel heater in your vehicle and uh, feel free to drop any questions or comments that you might have on this specific setup or maybe a question that you might have on your specific setup and uh, in closing I really wanted to thank you guys for watching I said it in the last video and I'll say it again you know it's very humbling to me that uh, you guys would watch my videos I'm a nobody on YouTube I just enjoy sharing my experiences with uh, camping or 
or fishing or whatever with you guys and uh, we'll see where it takes me but you know for the little bit of time that I've actually you know been on YouTube and, and put content out there it's very humbling that people actually take time to watch my stuff so you have a lot of choices on YouTube you know I'm a very small choice on there but I really do appreciate you guys watching and uh, if you found this information useful or if you want to follow me on more adventures you know please hit that like button or that subscribe button uh, you know that way you get a notification when I do make another video my plan is to make a video a week at some point I'm a normal guy I have a normal job it's really hard to devote the time that it takes to make a proper video every week but I'm gonna give it an effort uh, for sure every two weeks that's kind of what I've been trying to do for now so hopefully I can stay up on that you know one a week deal but uh, you know look for at least one new video every two weeks and uh, like I said thank you guys so much for watching it's a lot of fun for me to make these videos and it's more rewarding when uh, you take the time to make a video and people actually watch what you're making so thank you thank you thank you I sincerely appreciate it and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video thanks